guys, it's Abdul here, and welcome to another video. Today I want to talk about, um, you know, this topic that I've been hearing on YouTube and on Facebook. Uh, people arguing, is bodybuilding a real sport or not? Um, now, I have to say uh, my own opinion, and I'll provide some facts and evidence to back it up. And it's up to you guys to decide whether you want to take that or basically just stick to what you uh, know about that. Again, it's only my own opinion. I mean, I'm not forcing anything on you guys. You guys could do whatever you want, believe in whatever you want. It's your own choice. I'm just saying my opinion and what I think is um, right for me, basically. Now, I do agree with Lee Marker when he said that bodybuilding is really not a real sport. And my facts uh, behind that is if you look at any sport, so take, for example, soccer. Soccer is my favorite sport, by the way. I do play professional soccer. Um, basically, if you just look at, you know, throw back three weeks ago when Germany won the World Cup. Um, did you guys not think that Germany did deserve to win the World Cup? I mean, from day one, since they beat Portugal 4 nothing, I knew they're going to be, when the, at least going to be a good candidate to win the World Cup. I mean, I was 95% sure that they're going to take the World Cup this year. Why? Because the team chemistry was there. Uh, they have an amazing goalkeeper, great defense, great midfield, and great strikers as well. I mean, they did everything what it takes to accomplish that goal. I mean, they were just fantastic defend, de defensively, uh, offensively, and again, the goalkeeper was amazing as well. So I think uh, you guys would agree with me on that too, that Germany did deserve the World Cup. You know, they beat pretty, you know, good teams like, you know, Brazil, Portugal. They actually did face some pretty uh, tough teams, Argentina as well in the final. And I think we all agree on that, you know, hands down, Germany did deserve to win that World Cup. So they actually did work hard for something to accomplish that goal, and that paid off eventually. Now, take, for example, bodybuilding. I mean, I've done a fitness model show a couple of years ago, when I was 21, and um, guys, I did not even play top 10. I mean, am I mad about that? I mean, if you do feel frustrated, well, to be honest, I looked at the other competitors, and, you know, I would say maybe... I didn't really deserve to be top five for sure, but compared to other quality competitors, but again, judges look uh, differently. I mean, it's not always the biggest guy that wins the show or the most muscular guy with shredded abs that wins the show all the time. It really depends on what the judges are looking for. And keep in mind, there's nine judges that are sitting right, you know, right next to you, right uh, below you, sorry, and they're actually critiquing your physiques. And there's really nothing you could do about that. All you could do is show up with the best uh, best physique, best package as possible. Uh, you can do your best, do everything what it takes to accomplish that and hope for the best. Meaning you can't really interfere with what the judges are marking you. You can't appeal, you can't argue with them. That's it, it's official. Whatever they mark you on is what you get. And again, I mean, I don't know if you guys know about the WBFF that happened in Toronto about two, three years ago. Uh, basically, yeah, if you guys know Artus Shakur, my uh, my good friend Artus Shakur, he has one of the amazing abs in the world, guys. In the world. Just Google him or find him on Facebook, Artus Shakur. And he did not even place top 10 in the WBFF fitness model show. And if you talk to anyone, they would disagree about that and they think the athlete should have placed top 3 or 4. And I do agree with that as well. He should have placed at least, you know, top 3 as well. But guess what? He didn't make it top 10. So that tells you that even though he did work hard, he, you know, hit his nutrition, his diet, everything was, you know, on track. He was confident. He was, he looked so looked forward into it and he was confident that he's going to place top five, for example. But guess what happened? He did not even place top 10. And then what happened is he never competed since then. And he said he not, does not even plan to compete again since that time. And that's what I'm saying, guys. Bodybuilding is a very subjective sport and... You know, if you can't handle criticism, this sport's not for you. I'm sorry, that's just the facts. You know, we all know this. You know, in soccer, uh, other sports, you can actually do control the placing or you can actually control the win or losing the game or not by putting more effort, practicing more, and basically know your opponent. Well, in bodybuilding, you don't even know who you're going to be placing on next to you on stage. You don't even know the other competitors. You don't even know what the judges are looking for. And plus, on top of that, you had to pay for tanning, uh, your posing trunks, um, uh, registration fee, you got to pay for uh, other fees as well, like your nutrition, uh, you know, obviously the gym membership, 
Uh, I mean, that's really not major, but you got to pay for your opposing trunks, tanning, um, other fees as well. So maybe a coach, if you want to hire a coach for that show. And guess what? The coach can get you there, the shape that you want. You can attain the best physique of your own self. But guess what, guys? Don't be frustrated if you get a guy's don't place. And if you guys look at the professional soccer players, they do make a lot of money. Like look at Cristiano Ronaldo, for example. He makes, just from soccer, he makes probably like $9 million a year. Just from soccer. Without, without factoring in the commercial, the sponsors that he uh, does as well, that adds up to his income. Well, if you look at professional bodybuilders, if you win first place in a professional bodybuilding show, I mean, I'm not talking about Olympia, I'm talking about the local provincial shows, okay, that you do. So it's still pros, obviously, but I mean, I've seen it here in Toronto, the the, um, the CBBF or whatever you call it, the bodybuilding shows, the professional bodybuilding shows that we have. I mean, the winner gets maybe like two, three, four hundred bucks maximum if you win a bodybuilding show. I mean, I bet you guys he probably paid more than double or triple that amount to get into contest shape and to cover his tanning and other, other you know, any other miscellaneous fees as well to get him ready for stage. He can only win 400 bucks and a trophy. I don't know. For me, guys, it's really not worth it. That's why I kind of, you know, shot away from that sport and really focusing on just maybe modeling now and uh, soccer. If that's really my favorite sport. And basically, it's not subjective. You do have control of the result uh, yourself and your teammates as well. So again, just to recap, is bodybuilding a real sport? No, I disagree with that. Um, I mean, I disagree with people that are saying it is a sport. I think bodybuilding is not a real sport. Um, again, that's just my own opinion, guys. And feel free to comment and to let me know what you guys think. And hey, I mean, if you know if you don't disagree with me, just we can have a talk in the chat box below and let me know what you guys think. And please be sure to subscribe and like up my videos and join me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And as always, guys, more stuff coming soon. All right, guys, take care and have a wonderful night.